Welcome to the solutions to homework set number two for ECE 111, Introduction to ECE for Spring 2022. The first couple of problems are kind of gimmies. It is plotting in MATLAB. The plot command is always in Cartesian coordinates, x versus y. If I do something like x equals cosine, y equals sine, I get a circle. If I change the phase of y slightly, what I get is the elicitude figure. And this is what it looks like. If I run that, uh, let's see, where's run? Up here, run. I get a circle when you have sine versus cosine. When the sine shifts by 90 degrees, and it's really slow right now, I'll get a straight line that gives you cosine versus cosine. Then get cosine versus minus sine, a circle. Sine versus cosine versus minus cosine, a minus line. Um, basically, this is a circle that spins around. It's a little bit slow right now because I'm running MATLAB online with Zoom. Zoom really slows down MATLAB. Anyway, that's the first function. The second problem is the elicited you figure. This is the crown that kind of spins around. The third one is a log spiral. Kind of fun to look at. We'll see if we can get this to work. It's sort of working now. If we go down to the command window, hit Control C a couple times. I'm trying to get it to stop. Okay. Paste in the log spiral and run it. And maybe. Again, it's much faster when you don't have zoom running. Okay, there you go. That's log spiral. And it kind of spins around. Um, the eye, that just changes the phase shift of cosine and sine. Basically takes it and rotates it. So that's the first couple of problems. And another log spiral. Problem five is trying to repeat homework set number one. If I want to solve two equations, two unknowns, I can graph them, or I can use a thing called Newton's method. So going back to MATLAB, get this guy to stop. Come on, puppy dog. Okay, anyway, back at the ranch. Um, for the next problem, trying to find the solution to y equals x cosine of 2x and y equals x squared minus 1. One way to do that is create a function. I'm going to pass x, it'll calculate y1, y2, and return the difference in the two. Plus, just for fun, I'm going to plot what this looks like, that function y1 minus y2, along with my guess. So if I do like error of minus 3. What that does, bring this down a little bit. This is what y1 minus y2 looks like. I'm trying to find the zero crossings. Is the zero crossing at minus 3? The answer is no, and I'm off by 10. Is the zero crossing at minus 2? Better. The error is smaller. Yeah, playing with MATLAB here. Error is smaller here. Uh, keep guessing, guessing again. An organized way to guess is called California method. Here what I do is I take two guesses that interpolate. Based upon those two guesses, where's the zero crossing? Basically draw a straight line between those two points, see where it hits. Um, with California method, if I run that, this is an algorithm that goes through it with 10 iterations. And why are you not getting me an arrow? There should be a green arrow that lets me run this program. There it is. I'll start with my initial guess being minus 3. And fairly quickly, it converges to minus 1.61. If I make the other minus guess closer over here, say plus 3, and run it, there's my first guess, second guess, third guess. Oh, it's off in La La Land. It helps to have a good initial guess. If instead I try two, that's closer to the answer.
uh, again up in La La Land. Well, that's California method. Noon's method is almost the same, except I take a guess and take a small perturbation to find the slope, the derivative. If I run it with Newton's method, here's my first guess, second guess, third guess. I'm taking the derivative, see where that hits. And Newton's method converges very quickly. One solution is minus 1.61. Make the initial guess plus 3. And I converge to this solution. So with Newton's method, California method, it helps to know the answer to find the answer, but they converge really quickly. Kind of rule of thumb, if you ever have a method with the word Newton or Gauss in it, it's usually a pretty good method. The last problem is a little shoot game. If I clear the graph, to shoot a 30, 50, 90, if I launch a tennis ball at 30 meters per second, angle of 50 degrees, targets at 90. It'll show me how the tennis ball got launched. This is again a function equals zero. I'm trying to guess the speed until the difference between the target and where I hit is zero. Um, I can repeat what I did before. I'm using Newton's method. I'm going to guess 30 meters per second and let it run. So there's my first guess, a launch at 30 meters per second. Here's my target. And I missed. So the first guess, uh, I was short by 30. Looking at the derivative, I can interpolate and see where the next guess ought to be. Taking the derivative and seeing where the zero crossing is, says my next guess ought to be 39.07. Uh, missing by 0 0.59. I'll now take the derivative, you know, perturb it by 0 0.01, see what happens. Based upon those two guesses, interpolate, see what my next guess ought to be. Next guess should be 39.07, I'm off by 0 0.001. That's Newton's method. Again, if you're willing to do some calculations, you can converge much faster. That's homework set number two. Uh, the point being, I can create functions like shoot or error. I can do scripts like the California method, Newton's method, and do function equals zero. If you're doing willing to do some calculations, I can converge very, very quickly. A very useful trick you'll use throughout your four years at NDSU.